Now for the recap of stages two and three, uh, even though there was a prologue, so it's like the third and fourth race days of the Simac Ladies Tour, Women's World Tour race. Thanks for continuing on with us if you're listening on podcast players. Just a quick note on our show partner, LaCole, they've increased their commitment to women's cycling. They've extended their sponsorship of Drops LaCole, I think, out through 2023 now. So that news broke the other week. But this race, yesterday was a TT. It was a long TT, 17 Ks long. We thought the big favourites were Ellen van Dijk and Marlon Ruysa. It was pancake flat. This is all in the Netherlands from Hennep to Hennep and uh, yeah that that was exactly how it played out Benji with with Royce actually taking the win with some pretty big time gaps actually she beat Van Dijk by 18 seconds then a 41 second gap to Vandenbroek Black Klein on 50 Norsgaard who you said might do well she actually did do pretty well fifth at 101 then Vollering at 118 Seroy and Julie Leff on 128 then Barnes and Costa rounding up the top 10 I guess this is just a continuation of Royce's uh, Olympics form Benji yes it seems like it Seems like the uh, the prologue was not really a, a clear view on how her time trial was going to be on the longer time trial here. Seems like that longer time trial was uh, significantly better for Reuser. And uh, I think I mentioned that Van Dijk would be my rider for this. Seems like she was beaten straight on because I uh, I was reading up on like the live updates of the race and we hear times of, I think it was 11 minutes at one of the time gaps. And then suddenly Marlon Reuser just beat everybody by half a minute flying past. And at that point, I was like, okay, she must be in good form today. <laughs> and eventually uh, that led to the victory. So certainly uh, she was second, I think, at the Olympics ITT. And uh, once again, confirming that longer time trials are the ones she is good at. Uh, any other things to note? I think with Ludwig losing uh, two minutes here is a bit of the, the thing we mentioned on the prologue discussion where the more explosive riders do better on prologues which is a relatively obvious statement but it is shown right now in in data as well with with the being more explosive but when it comes to longer time trials falling behind other people that way so uh yeah interesting to see and uh a wonderful victory here but uh Lena Weber is also an example of one of those explosive riders that does better on a prologue than a uh, full-on time trial so this then changed the gc to have sd works best rider as vandenbroek black on 39 their second best volering at 119 and yeah i think royce uh i think probably better on the road than van dyke at the moment anyway so trek had obviously hosking i think they've got hosking here for the sprints so how they'd balance gc and sprints to probably just go for hosking so royce are in the in the lead on gc going into stage Three, which is from Stramproy to Viet, 176 Ks, pancake flat again. I think they do a lap of the finish line, like 30 Ks from the finish. We do have a sharp bend, long bend actually with 125 inches to go, it looked like to me before the finish line. Remind me of the Brabantse Pale finish, except not uphill where <laughs> Alaphilippe beat MVDP and Klaus yep. in 2020. Remind me very similar to that. You got to punch, you got to be punched out of there very fast. And but otherwise, we have. The, Pretty regulation race, Benji, with uh, the sprint teams controlling a lot better today. Yes, certainly. We had uh, some attackers here and there, and it was more the likes of a, a GT crash rider attacking here or there, like Quinty Ton attacking twice or three times in the race, getting a bit of a lead of 20 seconds and being caught again. We had plenty of people attacking around the 45 to uh, to 40 kilometer moan because there were a lot of bends there and it allowed just for a lot of attacks and there was a bit of chaos there with people trying to make something of this race not necessarily for the sprinter aspect of it and eventually that led to one rider again getting away Dunnick Hengeveld same rider that got caught in the last two kilometers on the uh the stage where uh Lorena Wibis crashed in oh, a healthy aging tour with that chicane in the end she was caught with yes. 200 meters to go with Danny Kangaville. So it seems to be a rider that tends to do this kind of stuff a lot and uh, seems to be pretty good at it because she was the longest rider when it comes to staying away for that portion of the broadcast at least. And uh, when she got caught, it eventually got back together and the peloton was seemingly going towards a mass sprint. And we had all the teams kind of putting someone at the front and doing something, but not necessarily a team taking over and controlling it completely. And that's 
obvious because there's no one to chase. So they can save their energy a bit. They can spend the little amount of riders that they need to spend on just keeping the tempo going and getting themselves to the sprint. But at a certain point, we had a uh, we had a rough crash, and it seemed to be I think Gloria Wibis who went down. That was what the commentator said, but I personally don't have confirmation on it myself. But uh, it apparently was. Yeah, it looked like she. Well, it didn't look like her. her tire it slipped off the road to the left hand side and there's a uh, a fair lip on the side of the road and then gravel on the left hand side once her tire hits gravel she has she loses her front wheel goes down is a very narrow road and we had sd works at the front so they have most of their team almost all that gets through and behind vivas everyone gets caught caught behind and so we we literally have a break of i think four SD Works riders and two of the DSM lead out who are going to be leading out the Renovibas. So another sprint victory opportunity denied for Vibas this Simac Ladies Tour and indeed in Dutch stage races this year. The riders to make it through were Amy Peters, Demi Vollering, Chantal van der Broek Black, and Lonica Uniken, the four SD Works riders, and Susanna Anderson, who is actually quite quick. She came second in one of those Norway sprints, and Pfeiffer Georgie, the British rider for DSM. So the question was, well, obviously SD Works are going to ride. They rode, <laughs> they, they rode full to the finish, but Vanderbilt Black is their GC rider, I think, here, and she's – you know, a fair bit behind. She's got to make up a fair bit on Marlon Ruisa. There's bonus seconds, I presume, at the finish. We've got Demi Vollering, who's super fast. Who are they going to sprint for? Lonica Unikin's also got a punch on her. And it seemed like they went full for Lonica Unikin. She went through that the last corner. I think first wheel opened up with Anderson and Fife, Fife of Georgie on her wheel and beat them easily in the sprint with Vollering not really... Yeah, she basically let Unikin go for the sprint today and Vanderbilt Black didn't take any bonus seconds, but she was able to take a fair bit of time. Uh, the gap was 14 seconds to two riders, Voss and Bastianelli, from that group of six, and then another 20, then 29 seconds to uh, where in Marlon Royce's group, which is a larger group, and then other riders like Luther Ludwig losing 49 and then groups even further behind um so in terms of gc royce is now only 10 seconds she keeps the jersey because she got such a big gap on the tt keeps the jersey 10 seconds out of vulnerable black van dyke drops down to third 12 seconds by and then klein at 40 second 47 volering up to fifth on 50 seconds so Lonica Unikin Benji, she is she is the future. I reckon she's won. Simak ladies <laughs> to a stage, help the aging to a stage, Balwaza ladies to a stage this year, 21 years old. She is uh looking very, very good. Yeah, and it's it's only recently that I honestly found out how decent their sprint is in, in reduced bunch sprints because in that lady store, Balwaza Lady Store, it was also in a in a sprint that she ended up winning. So honestly, she's uh performing on all kinds of terrains and while they might have been lucky today, likely, with the crash, because otherwise it would have been a sprint and she would not very likely have been the winner of that sprint. Well, it's still a wonderful performance and it is not super easy to beat Suzanne Anderson in a sprint either because we saw last week in the Tour of Norway when she sprinted to second in that first stage that she has a good kick as well. So, uh, yeah, good performance and uh, she keeps on uh, moving up on the rankings of SD Works, it seems. So, uh Curious to see when she's going to pop up in the uh, the bigger races because I feel like despite her having had good results, we haven't seen her at the top races like a Tour of Flanders or something like that yet. So uh, it's going to be hard to get into that selection though, knowing how decent the riders on SD works are. As in, I think Vanderbrook Black is retiring after the Classics next year. Obviously, AVDB is retiring this year. Marlon Rusa, who's leading this race, 29 years old, she's... Had a bit of a late development. This is her first year at Ali BTC Ljubljana where she's flourishing and her TT is, is flying. She's actually off to SD Works next year, which is uh, terrifying <laughs> in itself. So, But, yeah, tomorrow's stage from Helene to Schweikhuizen, 150K is long, an r- actual rolly parkour here. We have loads of short climbs, like 500, uh, 400 metres, 5%, 300 metres at 7% multiple times i think we're going to see sd works mount an attack on royce tomorrow with vulnerable black or unican or any number of their riders i think they're going to try and turn the gc upside down tomorrow benji yeah probably i feel like it's uh the day of the week where 
stuff can really happen. And I had the feeling that today was seen as a classified hill stage, but throughout the parkour, it didn't really feel like that. Because if you look at the parkour, when it's 20 meters in height, the hill, it's not really a hill stage in my eyes but i guess they have to they have to look for very tiny hills there to uh actually specify a race like that but indeed that is uh tomorrow the uh proper hill stage of this parkour but again it's only 300 meters at six to five percent so it's not the end of the world it's not liege kind of climbs i uh i think that lonica unikin is gonna do pretty well in that one as well to be honest uh based on the climbing we saw at healthy aging tour and her performance is there. She should on paper be able to get over these hills relatively well. I think it's going to be a good stage to watch, um, and I'm not sure it's going to be a bunch sprint. I wish Lotta Kopecky, I don't think, is here for Lotta Sudal. I think she would have been strong. Emma Norsgaard yep. is obviously the big the big danger as well. If, if yep. it goes to the finish and Vibas might be a big bang, bit banged up, Norsgaard is going to be very, very difficult to beat in this finish, as well as, of course, Mariana Voss. It's a slightly Lisa uphill. Klein, stuff like that. True. Yeah, Voss is yeah. certainly uh, one of those riders. And with Trip Ludwig as well, even though I feel like the hills are perhaps not strong enough for that to happen. Yeah, should be a good finish. Might be a group sprint, but I'm expecting ST Works to try something for GC tomorrow. But we hope you enjoyed the recap of Simac Ladies Tour of Stages 2 and 3. We'll have the recap of Stages 4 and 5. After the race finishes, stage five is the last stage on Sunday. But if you like this recap, like it down below. If you're watching on YouTube, give us a review on podcast players and we'll see you uh, with some more Vuelta action tomorrow. Ciao.